it's Penny here and today we're going to be doing a book battle wrap up of all the books that I read in June which means that I basically pair up the books that I read battle them against each other until we eventually figure out which book is the champion of the month. Now I only read seven books in June which is actually plenty of books to read in a month but uh, considering for most of the year I've been reading about 20 books a month it was a bit strange for me. Still I did really enjoy some of the books that I read so it's not completely terrible. So let's get into round one of the book battle. Our first battle is going to be between The Golden Fool by Robin Hobb and The Golden Key by Kate Elliott, Jennifer Robeson and Melanie Ron. So firstly The Golden Key. This is the second book in the Tawny Man trilogy and the Tawny Man trilogy is the third trilogy in the realm of the Elderlings. So this is a really massive epic fantasy series. Each book is really thick. I listened to the audiobook but I do have one of the books here so you can see that they're, they're quite decent in size. I will also say I feel like it's a bit hard to talk about just one book in the series because I've been reading this series for so long now. The whole story kind of blends together in my head. Also I'm really attached to all the characters so even though some parts are a little bit slower paced I honestly don't mind because I just really like spending time in this world with the characters that I care about. So I'll admit I'm probably not entirely objective in my review. So primarily this series is investigating the two kinds of magic in this world and how they interact with each other. So that's the ability that the royal line has to telepathically communicate with other humans but also sense and influence their emotions and their thoughts. There's also another ability that some people have which is the ability to communicate with animals. This ability is quite frowned upon and people who have this ability are often treated really badly and in fact in some cases killed. Uh, this series they are trying to change that and so it is quite a big part of the story. And our main character Fitz who was from the first trilogy is trying to teach the new prince how to use both these kinds of magic. I really love the way that Robin Hobb is exploring this magic. I also think a strong theme in this series and this book particularly is grief and I thought the grief was dealt with really well even though it was really horrible to experience and I definitely cried a bit but I think it's an important part of the story. Also there is a part in this book where the characters from the previous trilogy, the Live Ship Traders trilogy, all those characters showed up in this series, kind of blew everything apart, caused a lot of trouble and I was really excited to see all those characters again. Although I will say they kind of just dropped in, destroyed everything and then left so I'm not really sure what they got out of it but it did disrupt the story of the main characters in this trilogy so that was exciting. I just think that if you haven't picked up this series at all yet uh, and you like epic fantasy then you really should give it a go. Then the other book I picked up was The Golden Key. So this is by three authors and the book is split up into three parts, each part being written by a different author and also following kind of a different generation of these two families. One of them is the royal family and the other one is this painting family. So the magic in this world is painting based and each part it gets more and more intense and quite dark in some parts. I really loved the painting magic and how that was explored. Also like the prologue to this story is just a description of all these different paintings and you kind of get a lot of the world building done through talking about the paintings which was really interesting and I really liked it. I will say because each part is written by a different author you can see their writing style in each part. It made it a little bit inconsistent. Also some parts the pacing wasn't quite there so it did drag a little bit in some bits. And of course the characters that I met right at the beginning of the story there are a couple of them who kind of continue through the whole series and those were the ones that I felt really connected to. Uh, so later on some of the storylines that were happening with other characters I wasn't as engaged in it because I just wanted to find out what was happening with the other characters. Still I think it did such an amazing job of being this intergenerational story. Really each part could have been a book on its own but I understand why they put them all together. I am actually really sad because the plan was that each of the three authors would then go away and write a separate book each set in the same world. Uh, Melanie Ron wrote her one which I will pick up at some point. Her one was more like a prequel though so I kind of already know that story or at least I know some of it which was referenced in this and I have a feeling that I know which stories uh, the other two authors might have followed on with and I'm 
really disappointed that we're not going to get those stories. So I really enjoyed both of those fantasies, but I just can't be objective with this. I really love the characters in the Realm of the Elderlings series, and so I just had so much more emotional connection to the Golden Fool. So I'll put the Golden Fool through to the next round. Next we have Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters by Rick Riordan up against Lovely War by Julie Berry. So both of these books are based on Greek mythology. Percy Jackson is a middle grade slash YA story about this boy named Percy Jackson who discovers that his father is a Greek god. This is the second book in the series and I don't know that I liked it quite as much as the first one. I do like the way that Greek mythology is incorporated into the story but I have to say Percy Jackson was kind of dumb. Uh, he's surrounded by these Greek mythological monsters and he somehow doesn't realize even though he's already been through a whole book so he should know something about this stuff by now. I think really I just found this to be quite bitsy. Uh, like lots of different things happened bringing in different bits of mythology which was interesting but it kind of felt like a distraction from the ultimate thing that they were trying to achieve. But I did like the new character Tyson who's introduced in this book. I also liked the theme of giving your enemies a chance and like having empathy for your enemies and trying to give them a chance to redeem themselves. And then I will say the last like 10 minutes of the audiobook something happened that did make me very interested to see what will happen in the next book. Then Lovely War by Julie Berry is a historical romance story where Aphrodite has been caught by Hephaestus having an affair with Ares and she convinces him to let her tell this romance story set in World War One to try and like explain to him why she's doing what she does. I thought the writing was quite beautiful and like had quite a nice style to it. I thought the characters were quite cute. The main couple were quite cute. Uh, there is also a black musician who has a relationship with a French woman and so it explores the themes of race especially in relations to how things were during World War One. That was kind of interesting but just overall I felt like the two romance stories were quite generic and nothing really significant about them which really didn't make sense since Aphrodite kept making out like this was a story that was worth telling like above any other story that happened during the war which I just really doubt that was the most exciting love story during World War One. Like I did enjoy the bits with the Greek gods I found that more interesting than the romance which I felt dragged a bit although I admit that I don't particularly like romance so that's probably more me than the book itself but even the stuff with the Greek gods just didn't really amount to anything in the end. I did give this three stars but uh, mainly because I thought I could really understand how a lot of other people would like it but for me I was just a little bit bored most of the time. So as far as the battle goes uh, kind of both of these were average-ish reads but I was definitely a lot more bored in Lovely War. I felt like the plot of Percy Jackson was a lot more interesting and even I thought the Greek mythology was a lot better incorporated into the story so I would put Percy Jackson through to the next round. Then we have Arrival by Ted Chiang up against The Sandman Volume 2 by Neil Gaiman. So this is a short story anthology that was originally released as Stories of Your Life and Others but then they made the movie Arrival of one of the short stories from this book and then the book that I have is actually a release based on the movie, you know, with the movie cover. But the actual short stories mostly aren't to do with the movie. So there's eight stories overall and I loved every single one. Sometimes they do get quite mathsy or sciencey, so I think if you're going into this you should expect to have to think a little bit and I'm sure it's not going to be for everyone but I really loved it and I would say even though it's quite sciencey they're also still quite character based so even if you don't really understand the science I think you can still get something from the story. It does also look at how science intersects with politics and religion and I thought those themes were really interesting and like often I don't like short story anthologies because usually you just get a few stories that are really good but I have found that short story anthologies where every story is by the same author do tend to be ones that I enjoy more. Just I think you get a bit more consistency with the story quality and the themes kind of 
connect together better. I would definitely say if you're looking for a science fiction short story anthology that this is one you should consider picking up. Then we have The Sandman Volume 2. So I read Volume 1 last month and even though I had some problems with it I decided I will keep going because I do like the main godlike character who was like kind of a god of dreams and I wanted to see what else Neil Gaiman will do with that character. I think I'm going to need to read quite a few volumes to really decide how I feel about this series. Overall for this volume there was a storyline going throughout it that I did find quite interesting but there was also a lot that was included that I just wasn't important to that plot and I didn't really find it particularly interesting including a whole comic about, I don't know, it started out with Shakespeare but like I didn't really care enough to even pay attention to know what it was really about, if I'm honest. <laughs> I would also say I think the series is in some ways a bit of a product of its time. It hasn't necessarily aged well. There is a whole comic with this serial killer convention and the serial killers are almost fetishized. There's just some jokes that don't quite hit the mark and I think that is probably just the fact that this was released quite a while ago. There was also a bit of like unnecessary nudity which didn't really fit with what was happening in the story at the time. So there were a few things that I felt were a little bit borderline problematic and a few things that were just pointless and boring. But like there's a thread in there that I really enjoyed so I'll continue the series and we'll see how we go. Obviously for this battle you can tell that I'm going to put a rival through because I absolutely loved it. Okay, so on to the semi-finals. We have The House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass up against The Golden Fool by Robin Hobb. So, House of Earth and Blood. This is the first book in Sarah J Mass's new adult fantasy series called Crescent City. And this was a strange one. I picked it up kind of just out of morbid curiosity. I haven't always liked a lot of Sarah J Mass stuff. I liked the beginning of the Throne of Glass series but I felt like it went downhill in the end. I know that people who are fans of Sarah J Mass probably feel the other way around. So I just kind of think Sarah J Mass is not for me and this book didn't change my mind. However, I thought I might hate it and I didn't, which was weird. I will say that I think it definitely helped to listen to the audiobook. The audiobook narration was actually quite amazing. I thought the performance was really great and really conveyed what I think Sarah J Mass was going for. So I do recommend the audiobook. Do I actually recommend the book though? I'm not sure. I do think that the world is really interesting. She's brought in all these different kinds of mythological creatures into a fairly modern day setting. So there's cell phones and just modern day things. But there's also angels and shapeshifters and fairies. There's a lot of fae. So Sarah J Mass has a thing where she kind of fetishizes the fae and this is no different. So expect that. There's also just a lot of the romance was not what I enjoy and it didn't really make sense when they're in the middle of this demon murder investigation to be doing some of the things that they did was just didn't make sense to me. Everything is very angsty like every problem they hit is like a big drama. See I was trying to talk about the positive things and I've fallen into talking about the negative things. Uh, I felt like the romance was really predictable and I get really frustrated at the plot twists. Sarah J Mass's plot twists, and this is true in the Throne of Glass series as well, they often rely on one of the characters whose perspectives you're following, you're hearing all their thoughts, but they don't tell you something that they know and so then there's a big plot twist when they reveal the thing that they knew. But you were in their head so why did you not know it? I just wish she would write some plot twists that didn't rely on that device because I don't like it. I don't understand why they wouldn't think about the thing that they're keeping secret. So that frustrates me. But the actual demon murder investigation I thought was quite fun. I enjoyed it a lot. There's a lot of action that was a little bit over the top sometimes but for the most part I really liked it. So this is a really difficult book to rate. I think I gave it three stars. There's some things that I think are really great about it but there's some things that I really don't like. However I can see why a lot of other people would like those things so it's one of these books where I think it set out to achieve what it wanted to achieve but it's just not for me. But I did kind of enjoy it. Still I think it's obvious if we put this up against The Golden Fool 
I love The Golden Fool in so many ways. There's plot twists that don't rely on characters just not telling you things. Still, if I had to put House of Earth and Blood up against The Golden Fool, I would definitely put The Golden Fool through to the next round because it just felt so much more realistic. They're epic fantasies, so they're not realistic, but I enjoyed The Golden Fool a lot more. Then we have Percy Jackson in the Sea of Monsters up against Arrival by Ted Chiang. So I feel like this should be quite obvious too. I absolutely loved Arrival. The short stories were amazing. I really shouldn't call it Arrival. I should call it Stories of Your Life and Others. But just every single story made me think about things in such a different way. Whereas Percy Jackson, like it's a fun book and I can see why a lot of people who read it when they were younger really loved that series. But for me, it's just like an okay experience. Anyway, Arrival goes through to the next round. Okay, so now we're up to the finals. This is quick because I didn't read that much this month. Um, I'm kind of wanting to put this off because I don't want to make the decision. So we've got The Golden Fall by Robin Hobb up against Arrival by Ted Chiang, also known as Stories of Your Life and Others. I really loved both of these and it's really difficult because I feel like both of these are things that will stick with me over time. Looking at my spreadsheet, there is actually a 0.2 difference in the rating that I gave them, uh, and the significant difference comes from the pace. So I will admit that sometimes Robin Hobb's books can have bits that are quite slow paced, and they do maybe drag a little bit. As I said, it doesn't bother me because I love the characters so much that I would just read about them doing anything, even if it's really boring. But uh, it's also true that Arrival or Stories of Your Life and Others was just always well paced. Like it's, it's short stories, so they don't really have the chance to drag. And there weren't really any stories that I felt were significantly weaker than other stories. So given that, I think we're going to say the champion for this month is Stories of Your Life and Others, also known as Arrival by Ted Chiang. I just really loved it. And I'm definitely going to be picking up some more stuff by Ted Chiang in the near future. So, as always, if you have read any of the books that I talked about today, I would love to talk with you more about them down in the comments. Let me know what you thought about them. Or if you're planning to pick them up at some point, then let me know that too. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're doing well and keeping safe. And I will see you next time. Thank you.